Okay, so one more come to this edition of the program, Kyushu Institute of Technology, Women in Space. This year, the World Space Week is themed Women in Space. So we have uh, uh, decided to interview ladies that have really done very well in the Kyushu Institute of Technology, that have uh, participated in the satellite development process. If you didn't know that Kyushu Institute of Technology it is the leading university in the world that have launched uh, small satellites. According to the Bryce Technology uh, report, it has got 16 satellites that have launched into space. So the World Space Week, it is an international celebration for the celebration of this contribution of science and technology for the betterment of the human condition. So in this uh, uh, program, I've got uh, Pooja Lepta from Bhutan. I've also Kate. Uh, who's also joining us. I've got also Fatima, also Makiko, and also Shazana and Roda. The good thing for, for, from our panelists is that uh, some are at QTEC right now and some that are already in the industry. So my first question is going to go to Pooja Lepta. Can you please share your experiences at uh, Kyushu Institute of Technology? Hello everyone, I am Puja and I am, I, I am from Bhutan uh, originally and at QTEC I did my master's and I'm in my third year of PhD now. Uh, in QTEC I have been part of uh, uh, around five projects, five satellite projects and I mainly work on uh, EPS, uh, electric power system of the satellite project and my research is on developing low-cost ground sensor terminals for developing countries for remote data collection using satellites. Okay, maybe before we uh, go so much, maybe can you maybe, uh, uh, Kate, just briefly introduce yourself so that we can just go around so that you can introduce yourself. Kate. Sure. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Katerina. I am originally from Ukraine. I came to Japan in 2013 to start my PhD there, and I have my master in mechanical engineering for electric propulsion and microsatellites. And my PhD from QTEC is electrical engineering and is also about the propulsion but already for the CubeSat technologies. Uh, currently, I'm working in business development uh, and based in Europe. Uh, that's great. Uh, Fatima? Thank you, Simonti. Uh, I'm Fatima Duran from El Salvador. Currently, I am a master's student here at QTEC. I'm also specializing on the study of the sustainability, sustainability and adaptability of LoRa modulation for a satellite application right now. And um, have a, my background is I have a bachelor's in aerospace engineering. Nice to meet you all. Uh, well okay, <clears throat> thank you, Timothy, for the introduction. Okay, my name is Wadaouni. I'm from Egypt. I went to QTEC back in 2018 as a master's student, part of PNST program. Uh, I worked there in almost three satellite projects. And I, after graduating, I came back to Egypt exactly one year ago, and I started working for the Egyptian Space Agency. Uh, Makiko? Hello, everyone. I'm Makiko Kishimoto from, um, from Japan. And now I'm a, a PhD student uh, in QTEC, uh, Chow Laboratory. And um, I'm, my research is mainly about the uh, communication things. And then now I'm researching about the orbit domination. And I also joined the uh, uh, BAD project from my bachelor student. And also, I did the Kitsune project for my master's uh, student. Then now I'm doing another project. Thank you. Ah, that's great, Shazana. Hi, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Shazana Bashira, Binti Muhammad Zaki. That is my long name, but uh, everyone called me back then in laboratory. Uh, they just call me Shazana. So I am from uh, Malaysia uh, and currently living in Shahalam. Uh, Selangor. And uh, back then, uh, I arrived in QTEC in 2016 and graduated uh, in 2020. Uh, I think that's last year uh, itself. And I received my PhD uh, in engineering uh, in the same laboratory from the same laboratory as uh, 
uh, uh, Puja and Makiko and Hoda. So um, uh, my research uh, back then is uh, related on the adaptive array antenna for ground station tracking system. And I also uh, one of the member in Brits2 project. And my, uh, this, uh, my assigned um, subsystem would be will be last time is a communication subsystem uh, and particularly uh, related with the antenna design uh, that's all from uh, from me and currently uh, i just uh, received my first job i mean i enter my first job during july early july in a startup company called angkasa x innovation sendiri murahat in malaysia so i just uh, joined joined the company as a head of mission and uh, policy and compliance in the company. Uh, that's ah. all for my in introduction. Okay. Uh, uh, congratulations for you uh, getting a, a new job. And uh, maybe I'll start with you already. That uh, what are the really the important aspects that are expected by the employers since like uh, since you said you started the, uh, in July, June. And what are the important aspects that are really expected from the employers, Sazana? Uh, yeah. So. Um, Previously, uh, I, I never worked in the industry before. I uh, continued my study from degree until PhD straight away. So uh, firstly, it's quite a challenge, challenge it's quite challenging for, from, for me to enter the industry, especially in space industry. And Malaysia also has a, a very um, a least space company in uh, nowadays but uh, it's like a blue ocean strategy now uh, everyone want to go to uh, space industry but at the same time um, acquiring something technical from uh, previously in QTech and we learn uh, the entire process of developing a uh, birds to project is re really technical stuff and we also uh, we, uh, at the same time do our did our PhD research but uh, when we in entering the space industry is a, a different kind of story we have to uh, actually um, need to understand the business perspective too so not only um, we based on our own knowledge but we have to consider the business perspective of our stakeholder the real stakeholder yeah so we have to uh, also um, take consideration of what is the profit co will come in into the uh, company and also if we uh, lost something <laughs> so we have to um, really really be careful uh, instead of uh, just Previously, we uh, do the in educational level. It's a different kind of story. If you make mistake, uh, that is okay because we are learning the process. But here in space industry, it's like um, uh, you cannot make mistake. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Shazana. Oh, that you are also already in the industry, and Shazana mentioned that uh, it's a different uh, uh, board game that when you are at uh, the university and now when we, we, we are at work. What is your take on that? Yeah, actually, I agree with Shazana. Being a student is different from being an employee. Uh, being a student, you are expected to learn. You go through the process. You get some gui guidance and support. But being an employee, you are expected to do more to more, to like take the decisions at some point and to <clears throat> and to go through the different perspectives and aspects of the process of satellite development, for example. So there is a part of the administrative work that is new for us that we are experiencing now in the in the uh, official uh, market okay it uh, seems that we have lost all the kate you are already in the industry can you also share your experiences on that uh, maybe how do you want to continue i think we have you here right yeah or you didn't you hear to... my answer <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's okay. You can you can carry on. Both we had lost your connection, but you can carry on. Order. So maybe it's my internet connection. Well, okay, it's fine. We can go to Kate. We can come back okay. to order. Okay. Let, 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 thank you, Timothy. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I I was working uh, probably from my third year of bachelor here in Ukraine in the laboratory. And I joined university at 16. So basically I started working in around 19 years old and I had no break like at all. And when I graduated from QTech, I started working as a project manager at QTech. 
And maybe after 10 years of working without any break, I said, I need a break. And then private company in Tokyo, they say, hmm, let's do business development. You're probably tired from engineering. Let's do business development. And I thought that BD, it would be first super fun. And second, much, much easier from engineering. And I moved there. And now I could say that BD, it's complicated probably twice or maybe even three times than engineering. Uh, because in engineering, you have this opportunity to sit in the lab and do the particular stuff you assigned to. But in BD, as already Shazana mentioned, you have to think first about the company profitability and you have to improve every single step that every single employee is doing in your company according to the world um, technology level, let's say. You can't think slow. You have to be always super fast, always super fresh. So I started saying that I moved to the dark side of satellite development being in BD. But at the same time, it's super, super fun. But I could say that the success of working uh, in space industry, especially for the company grows and uh, the business development in general, it's your connections. Um, when I moved to the first company for being a leader of a business development team, I realized that already graduating from QTech, I have so many connections all over the world, uh, joining the conferences, traveling to the other countries, but you also have to be like, you know, talkative. So if you're talkative, then there should be no problem. Uh, but connections, it's very important. And also, so connections, very important to engineering as well. Uh, because uh, going somewhere outside, you always meet people in the industry. You always can share your experience, uh, get some hints from other companies, uh, look at the other company technology, understand what and how does it work. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, you talked about that. Connections are very much important. And also the good thing about QTech that uh, we've got diversity of what uh, people from different countries across the world uh, we've got many students that are here. Me, I'm coming from Africa, some they are coming from Asia, some from Europe. Across the world, we've got uh, uh, students. Uh, Kate, you said that uh, you were a project manager at some time, but uh, did those skills of you being a project manager, because you've got some administrative skills, which uh, Oda and Shazana, they've mentioned that they did not get those kind of skills. Did you find them helpful when you were now in the industry? Yeah, sure. Uh, basically, if you're managing a team or if you're managing a project, it's like a team, you have a project. So when I was moving to the company, I was also having a team there. Uh, it, it was a different direction of our work, but it still was a team. And the managing time, managing responsibilities, managing time schedule, uh, and et cetera, et cetera, being responsible for what you're doing every single day, that was really very helpful. But I also believe it depends on your personality. If your personality in general, like, you know, girls, girls usually much, much better in managing things because we do remember everything we did for the past two weeks. Like, man, they might forget, but we do remember. And we are very good with documentation, with mailing, with remembering people, remember what we said, what we promised, which is very, very useful for the industry, for sure. Okay, uh, uh, thank you very much. I think, uh, but uh, maybe I go to order again. Uh, order, do you feel that uh, uh, they need to be introduced to some courses that uh, also do with administration? Since you have alluded that uh, those kind of skills that you have seen that when you're at school and now when you're at work, they are lacking. Do you feel that uh, there are supposed to be some business development uh, uh, courses? Yeah, actually, this is a very good idea because business is part of the process of developing the satellites and more. the world now is more moving towards the commercialization of space and many applications are going to the market and to the customers directly. So I think yeah, it's a very nice idea that students in QTech should start studying about the business perspective of the space industry and how can they like uh, use the skills that they have learned to achieve more towards the, this perspective of the market. Okay, 
uh, that's a good thing. I think uh, they are listening uh, to this uh, program that uh, the skills of the business development are quite vital. Whereas when you are now looking at the world over, the issue of innovations, they are now coming up. You being at QTech, not only thinking of you being employed, but also being thinking of creating jobs. Uh, I'll go to Makiko. Makiko, can you please uh, share with us uh, the important aspects of uh, the satellite development process in those projects that you have participated in? I think the communication each, each, each other is a very important thing. Uh, I think Kate also said uh, similar things, uh, but uh, when we developing the satellite, um, there's a mini subsystem there. So if we lost the communication, each other, uh, there's, a, there's a many misunderstanding, and then the design also become different, and then we cannot integrate everything. So for the development, I think the communication is a very important thing. Okay, what kind of skills are required for you if you are in a communication subsystem? What kind of skills that are required? For you um, to I think the um, first of all, uh, link budget is very important. Link budget means to achieve the uh, success, uh, achieve the communication from the ground station to satellite. And uh, if we cannot uh, think about the, this budget, uh, we cannot uh, we cannot uh, communicate to satellite. So first of all, we need to think about it. Oh, thank you. Then uh, Fatima, you are a master student. You are recently enrolled by QTEC. How did you know about QTEC, or how did you make a decision for you to say now you want to do uh, a space engineering? How did you make such a decision? Okay, thank you, Timothy, for your question. As well, I always wanted to study something related with space since I remember since I was very young. And once I was studying uh, aerospace engineering, we focus more on the side of, you know, aircraft and this kind of things. But when I was studying my bachelor's in South Korea, I had the opportunity to participate in the international space training given by the Korea Aerospace Research Institute. So during that training, it was two weeks training and we could learn about satellites technologies, especially for developing countries. So I could learn at that time that there's a lot of capability by using satellites and not only big satellites as I previously had thought, but also CubeSats that in the case of developing countries is very accessible in the case of you know economic uh, situation for us that it's very hard. So from that point on, I think it grow the interest more and more to know more about satellites, what can we do with them, how can benefit my country, because we still don't have a satellite yet. So from that point on, I think I became very passionate about that. And by the end of my bachelor's, well, I get to know about QTEC and I started reading a little bit and I found out that here at QTEC, you have a lot of opportunities that you actually engage in real satellite projects. That is what I really also wanted to do because I know that it's not only what you see in the classroom from your professors, but it's actually the work that you do by working itself that you can learn the most. So I think that is what it really motivated me. And also I found that QTEC is kind of the number one uh, university for CubeSat development and testing as well. So that's why I wanted to apply and I learned about uh, the postgraduate study on nanosatellite technology, the scholarship from uh, UNOSA and the government of Japan and also QTEC. So that's why I feel very interested into applying to this process. Ah, thank you, Fatima. And uh, maybe I'll put your lecture. I want to say congratulations uh, for you being one of the emerging uh, uh, space leaders in the world that was chosen for the year 2021. I want to say congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. you, you have participated in many satellites uh, project, uh, Pooja. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the most uh, important things uh, that uh, I want you to maybe ask you, before you came to QT, what kind of skills now have you accrued over time that you you say up to this stage? When I came, I didn't get those skills. Now I'm, I'm able to do this. Can you share with us? 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, before I came to QTech, I had no idea about space and what are the things that we require. I mean, what are the skills that we require to be able to uh, work for things in space? Like I completely did not have any background. I did my bachelor's in electrical engineering. And in my country, um, we had not even launched our first satellite. So at that time, uh, we were in talks of launching our first satellite and that's how it became a news in the country and that's how I got interested and knew about QTech. So uh, until uh, before I came to QTech, I had no skills whatsoever related to satellite development. But after I came here, I saw this huge um, lab and everyone being skilled at something. So everyone was handling different subsystems, like uh, someone was handling electrical power systems, someone communication, someone antenna, someone structure. Structure. So everyone had different skills and actually no, none of them really learned something from their country. So everything, whatever they learned, they learned it from QTech. So, and when we integrate, uh, when we are part of satellite projects, each one of us, of us are handed over a subsystem. But it's not just the subsystem that we should be caring about because our when in a satellite, the subsystem uh, communicates or correlates to another part of the system of the satellite. So we need to know, we don't, uh, we need to know a little bit of everything about all the, for example, if I am working on structure, uh, then I need to know how the electrical power is not supposed to touch certain parts because it can cause a shorting in because some parts of the satellite structure are grounded and then uh, some parts should not touch. But if you only have the structural point of view, then you would not know. So you should know a little bit more about uh, electrical power system there also. So it was like a very wholesome education that I <laughs> think I got he uh, after coming here. So uh, yes, before coming to QTech, I had no idea about anything really. So after coming to QTech, I am uh, being a part of project. I am expected to know a little bit of everything, every part of the satellite. Uh, satellite. And then it's uh, also good for me because if I am to go back to my country and if I am to develop a satellite, so I would, not I would be expected to know every aspect of the satellite development process, not just my subsystem that I handle. So yeah, that is what I learned, I think. <laughs> ah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Pooja. And maybe Shazana, I want to uh, ask you that, um, you say that you worked on the antenna system, right? Maybe there are some other uh, girls out there that would want also to work on the antenna uh, system. What are the important aspects that are required for you to carry out uh, the job of the antenna system effective and efficient? Yeah, uh, I think uh, to uh, extend what Makiko has uh, explained just now, uh, first, uh, the link budget itself. So we have to follow the link budget accordingly. And at the same time, uh, when preparing the antenna material and also uh, the manufacturing of the antenna, uh, we have to take into consideration of many things. For example, uh, when we do the radiation pattern test, we have to take into consideration uh, how much loss that we need uh, and uh, how much uh, the attenuation that uh, involved during the testing and uh, while testing also we need to uh, check and double check and always um, what you could, uh, we could say um, verified by, by the authority or the superior so that's uh, the thing that I think um, uh, we need to take into consideration and not only we tested by the wired testing, we also need to uh, test in the RF, RF condition or inside the uh, um, what you call it, uh, EMC chamber. Uh, an chamber. Yeah, an chamber. And also we need to test a long range test communication just to see how sensitive our receiver is. So that's other thing that I think is so important. Um, However, we need to have a team, a good team uh, to validate or to double check our work uh, frequently. So that is uh, my uh, thinking, and my opinion about um, antenna subsystem. I uh, thank you, Shazan. I think uh, the same thing that uh, Pooja had also mentioned that uh, you need to work as a team because the satellite has got different subsystems. So you are not only focusing only on your subsystem, but you also need to make sure that your satellite is also able to talk to another subsystem so that they can be able to interface with each, with each other. Oda, you are now in the industry and you have been at QTech. Do you feel that the skills that you got at QTech were enough 
for you now, when you are now carrying out your job, besides the issue of the administration that you have mentioned, that that skill, of course, you did not acquire it. But do you feel that the skills that you got in Kinte are enough? Actually, this is a very good question. Um, I believe that the learning process will continue, like starting from where I began at the bachelor degrees, and then continuing on by the QTEC experience and going on with that the, uh, official job uh, experience. Every part you learn different skills. So if we speak about QTEC, the part where I worked in QTEC in satellite project, I think I learned a lot about the process of developing satellites and it's really paying off now. Uh, going through the whole process, starting from the PDR, MDR, CDR, and all of this stuff, and the environmental testing and uh, uh, the launcher requirements, all of this stuff I learned in QTEC, plus also other like um, theoretical parts related to the courses that we were taking. So the learning uh, amount that we had in QTEC is really big and is really helpful. But I believe, yeah, that you still have to work on yourself more and more uh, along the, the journey so that yeah, the, the process doesn't step at at one side or on one place. Uh, thank you, Oda. I think they say that learning is a continuous process. So whenever you finish, it's not like you, you are done. You also need to continuously learn and learn. Kate, you are now in the business development. One of the most important things that uh, the issue talked about the issue of innovation. And we want to look at this issue in depth that uh, what is your take on the issue of innovation since you are now into business development? What is your advice to the policymakers at the Institute about the issues to do with innovation? It's a difficult question. Um, you know, for the past years in Kitek, basically students and laboratory in general more concentrated on CubeSat technology. And when I also was a part of the lab uh, who's working on that, uh, we basically are considering a space and the market uh, as a place for CubeSats and CubeSat constellation for a different purposes like technology demonstration, technology testing, constellation for the communication, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So basically our life is was rotating around the CubeSat technology. However, when I just arrived to QTEC, the satellite that we were working on as a students uh, was a microsatellite. So it was something bigger than CubeSat. And when I moved to the industry, more like a commercial, let's say, industry is not even the governmental. Governmental basically depends to the gov government budget. Uh, they have the amount of money they can spend. Their jobs are not related uh, to the quality of work most of the time. It's basically a governmental service. When you're working for the commercial company, you are very much responsible to the product you are giving to the world. So. I don't want to say that the CubeSat technology are not good enough for the current situation. However, uh, considering, uh, let's say, let's talk about the missions. Considering uh, the speed of communication that the world wants to reach having a constellation of satellite on the orbit, CubeSat will not be enough to provide this, let's say, uh, communication speed. Uh, flying to a different universe, different planets, uh, considering the speed of communication, considering the distance, you have to have something very much powerful on board your spacecraft. So having a skills in CubeSat definitely, definitely will give a huge advantage, uh, especially when we are graduating, we having a knowledge about the environmental testing, clean room, satellite assembly, all the documentation, ITU processing, and etc. All this part of work is so much important. However, if you are talking about the perspective in the industry, now uh, maybe my, my, my work affected me, but I believe that um, microsatellite plus 100, 200 kg depends on the mission will be more popular in the next five, 10 years. Uh, than CubeSat technology. Uh, still, for some technology demonstration, university project, CubeSat would be number one. But for commercial mission, uh, if company wants to have a profit, anything smaller like CubeSat will not give advantages. However, I still see how companies around the world, even now, uh, establishing new companies, people establishing new companies, building a CubeSat technology. I recently were talking to some of them in few Asian countries in Europe as well, uh, South America, 
and they still think that CubeSat technology will grow faster. So maybe they have some different observation. I believe that microsatellite will have some advantages. And another point that I want to highlight, it's a part uh, business on making a satellite components and satellite parts. Let's say like a communication board, uh, onboard computer, camera systems, uh, what else? Whatever that is the part of the satellite, making a business on this is very, very complicated, especially if it's a propulsion. Let's say we are talking about uh, optical technology. There are so many companies around the world who are much, much, much already run away from us. They are so great at making telescopes, making a matrix for telescopes, for data processing, that it's so difficult to reach their level. It's like, you know, we are a student and we want to have, uh, let's say, dragon in one year, same dragon like uh, SpaceX having. Uh, which would be very complicated, right? Uh, if it's a propulsion technology, the satellite uh, always changing the size. It is a CubeSat, then 100 kg, then 500 kg. And every time adopt your, your, your parts to the current needs of the market is very complicated. Uh, same for the communication. It's increasing, increasing, increasing. The development time for every subsystem is about two years, three years. In these two, three years, the initial technical requirements that you signed for your subsystem would be completely different in three years, completely. But to understand this, actually, it's very difficult to predict. Uh, so parts, I believe, also will be very, very challenging business. Communication, it's a great technology now. Uh, also, data processing would be uh, raising very, very fast, I believe, because the amount of data is coming to us is so huge, but there are not so many people who can really fuse data, you know, like a fusion of data between imagery, communication, terrestrial data. There are not so many people who can do fusion. So this kind of data analytics will be, I think, a very profitable industry, uh, considering that we're also flying to the moon, new data will be coming, um, telescopes to the universe looking, so all the things. Um, so probably it would be interesting to study data analytics first, then market study. I don't wanna say that, that it's economy, but like a market study, uh, let's say the company um, budgeting and et cetera, uh, and something related to investment because nobody knows how does investment side works in the market. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you talked about the issue that uh, now you need to look in on the manufacture of the components. Was during the CubeSat project, mainly most of the components they are commercial off the shelf. So maybe to those that are already at uh, QTech, maybe you can start to think about those things if you also intend to or make some components as Kate has alluded that it is one of the opportunities that are there in the market. But looking at the CubeSat development process was the first thing is you look at the needs of, uh, of your different countries, let's say in the best project, then you design a satellite that addresses those needs. Isn't it those kind of skills help you in the issues to do with innovation? Because already you are looking at a problem and you are solving a problem by designing a satellite. Since Puja, you have worked in different uh, uh, satellite projects. What is your take on that? Wait, uh, I, I got lost in the question. So your question is about uh, innovating in making components, you mean? Yes, I'm saying, uh, isn't it that the satellite development process helps mm -hmm. you in the issue of uh, developing that critical uh, uh, thinking or for innovation, since the mm -hmm. first thing that you do is you look at the needs of your different respective countries. Then after mm -hmm. that, you design a satellite that addresses those needs, which means there will mm -hmm. be some form of innovation that is there. But mm -hmm. I, now I want uh, to hear from you, you have uh, participated in different satellite projects now. How does, uh, what is your take on, isn't it that it helps you to develop uh, some skills about innovation? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you for repeating the question. So, 
Yes, I think uh, what you say is right, that uh, being part of satellite project and then uh, fulfilling the needs of stakeholders and what they expect of to achieve from the satellite that we develop is uh, helps in innovating. But a lot of things also depends on um, feasibility of the missions and uh, those kind of thing. And if we look into uh, small satellites, uh, and especially the ones that we have in QTEC, uh, we look into the heritage of the components that we use. So most of the time we are uh, using the components that we know works in space. We are looking at other satellite projects or other, uh, we look for the, uh, how do you say? Um, we look for space, uh, I forgot the word exactly. What is it? <laughs> uh, space qualification, let's say. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, so yes. So if yes. we are if you are looking for a component or a camera, let's say, or a peak, uh, so we do radiation test to see if it uh, can. I mean, if we can withstand the space environment or not. So uh, we are looking into innovations, but we are also looking into the heritage of the components that we are using. So uh, things get limited at that time when we want to innovate things. Mm -hmm. So uh, also um, what I want to point out is that when we are developing a small satellite, it follows all the processes of uh, what a bigger uh, satellite like microsatellites can uh, do, like uh, CDR, PDR, things like that can, uh, where we evaluate the design. And I think similar processes are also involved doing a uh, bigger satellite. But however, uh, when we look into the limitations, like uh, for small satellites, we usually aim at uh, shutter development time. And we look for components that is OK to last between six months to one year or something like that. But if we are looking into bigger satellites, we need to find components that are uh, has more reliability and more uh, can withstand more, uh, more of the space environment, things like that. So I think uh, innovation in development uh, process, like uh, from small satellites to larger satellites, uh, if we are uh, moving into that uh, we see a lot of innovations, uh, innovative things that can come up during this time. And also if we are working on a CubeSat, on one new CubeSat, so we scale it to six U CubeSat. So there are certain things that need to be changed from one U to six U because the same bus system will not be uh, used for the bigger satellites. So uh, yeah, so I think, yeah, being in a satellite project. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I believe like what you are saying that, um, mm -hmm. When you are moving from 6U to 3U, there mm -hmm. are some factors mm -hmm. that you look at. I think mm -hmm. the issue that uh, also Kate uh, mentioned about that, now you need to have that uh, issue of looking at the profit. Of course, when you are now at, uh, at QTK to be, there's some form of uh, some business, because when you are now choosing the components, you have mm -hmm. to choose a component that is not expensive, but that is able to do the job. Mm -hmm. But uh, right. I think you know you need maybe to develop more, you know maybe looking at the issues to do with uh, our profitability and uh, maybe mm -hmm. them, like what uh, Kate uh, has been saying. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. Fatima, I want to ask you what method, what different methods did, uh, did you use at different levels of edu of education? Um, different methods of studying, you mean? Yes. Yes, in studying. Okay, I think that is a very interesting question. Um, well, it was very tricky for me because I, well, I did my undergrad also in, in South Korea, so I had to adapt to a different level of responsibilities, and it was very, very hard for me to make that transition from El Salvador to South Korea because in that part, I think um, we have different types of educational systems. So what it worked for me before that it was, you know, like studying in detail and studying a lot and asking questions directly to my professors in my country was working. But in South Korea, you had to learn how to work by yourself most of the time. You had to rely more on what you study, what you understand, because sometimes professors, they are also busy and it was a little bit hard to reach out to them or sometimes because of the language barrier, because I was not studying in English, I also studied in Korean. So it was very hard. So I had to find different ways. I think from different courses, you have to adapt differently. For instance, some courses you can maybe read, but in some courses you also have to practice doing some exercises and take your time. And here at QTIC, I feel like I have to multitask a lot because you not only have your courses, but you also have your project and you also have your research. So you really have to learn about time management skills because you cannot focus only on one thing. Okay. 
And Shazana, did you have any problems when you are at uh, QTEC? Did you also face the same problems that uh, Fatima faced? Yeah, uh, I, I faced the same problem actually because uh, my research is not uh, not in the same as um, in in a project. So I think other students they have like um, re their research or master research or PhD research yes. in the project. So there is a, a benefit for them, one of the benefit for them. But in my case, uh, during that time, I it's like I have to divide my brain into two. So <laughs> uh, my research is very different than my project. So. That is the challenge, challenging thing for me. And also my background of study uh, previously, um, during my master's also, I did my master by research full time. Uh, and it's actually helped me a lot during my PhD in doing research. But uh, involving in a project uh, is something is so new to me. And uh, like uh, Fatima said just now, uh, doing multitasking job is very um, uh, sometimes tiring, but uh, so enjoyable also. It's like uh, you have a whole, um, uh, you have to uh, divide your time uh, perfectly. <laughs> like uh, sometimes you have to work also during night time. So that is uh, one of the challenging thing for me. Yeah. And Wada, can you also share your experiences? Yeah, actually, I can like comment on what they mentioned, both of them. I think go, uh, in being in QTEC, you had a lot of activities going around. You have the projects, you have the research, you have the seminars, you have the courses, and you have to like coordinate between these things. And you need to benefit from each and every activity of these because each has like different perspective. And also being in Japan, there is a lot of, like another perspective of doing some uh, activities and stuff so you don't want to miss any of these things so yeah it was a uh, hard time I could say and you, you have to learn how to manage these things but back then one like later on when you remember what how these days you would just be grateful for all the opportunities and for all the time and for everything that happened and you would like be grateful for the learning process as well and also Kate did you also face the same problems uh, not actually. <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, I had so much free time. And probably not everyone knows, but when I was going to Japan, uh, I had also a chance to study in Beijing and Germany. But I thought, okay, I've been to China already. Germany is close. Let's go to Japan. I thought it would be super fun. But in Kitakushi, absolutely nothing to do. Absolutely zero activities, except going to the lab. So probably that was the main reason why I successfully graduated from PhD because there is zero activities around. Um, and I had so much free time and probably uh, even having a project like satellite project and PhD, but I successfully watched all series that I can watch at that years online. Uh, it was amazing time uh, for sure. We had so many classes, but not as many as I get used to have um and all the internal seminars um that was fun but you know when it's an obligation it's difficult to follow however i believe it was very very useful when i start working uh, i realized that the books that we were reading on our book seminar uh, actually very useful for the work when you need to check the space environment at some orbit or when you need to follow up this um, project schedule, requirements for some systems and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. All this stuff we actually were reading uh, during our study. Probably we didn't pay much attention to what we are reading and this is, this is our problem, but we definitely had everything to start the career. Oh, thank you very much, Kate. You talked about the issues about the book seminar. At Kyushu Institute of Technology, of course, the book seminar, where we've got, uh, for example, for the space engineering books, where students, they each and every chapter, they also read and also explain to their other counterparts, and they can also be asked questions so that they can also be able to understand when they read, when they are uh, asked questions, they can also get more insight in things that they did not understand. Makiko, maybe looking at the issue of uh, the of books, which is your most interesting space book that you have read? 
So in my case, so first yes. I did the system engineering book, and then next I did the uh, material uh, books, and then yeah. finally I did the space environment book. So at the beginning, my English level is very low, and then oh. I was very hard to understand. So actually, I couldn't enjoy in the uh, system engineering, okay. and then. So it means, so for me, a uh, space uh, environment book is very interested. And then, because I also doing my, uh, I also doing uh, learning about uh, ionosphere for my okay. uh, master, master, master research. Okay. So the topic is matching. So it's very interested for me. Ah, so that's great. At least, uh they are hearing that uh, these book seminars, they are really helping the students. Also, not only uh, for them also developing more understanding about space, but also in their different academic uh, disciplines. Uh, maybe I'll come back to Pooja. What are the challenges that you think that um, the girl child is uh, facing or girls at QTEC faces during the satellite development process? Mm, when it comes to satellite uh, challenges that girls face, I think uh, in QTEC, I, I don't see any challenges because we all are treated equally. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that what I feel or what everyone feels, but we all are treated equally. We all are expected to come at the lab at late night if there is a work to be done. <laughs> we all must complete our work on time. There is no, uh, you do not get, a, what is it, bonus point because just because you're a girl. No, we do not, we have not faced. I, I have not faced, I don't know if others will agree with me or not, but I think I have not faced uh, any situation where I was treated less of a girl, less of a person because I'm a girl. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I have had situations in the past where uh, I was uh, like, I, people said, ah, oh, you're a girl, what will you do? And why are you studying so much? Because at the end, you are just expected to get married and settle down, something like that. But uh, Coming to QTEC, I see everyone being treated equally and everyone uh, yeah, is expected to finish the work on time, is not given any excuses because you're a girl. So I think I have not seen that partiality here. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe order. How do you balance your work and your social life? Uh, maybe you can show your experiences when you were at QTEC and also then also share your experiences now we are now at work are there any differences yeah actually being in qtec and being here is different because here i have like my family around and have this type of commitments but back in qtec uh, you were more focused towards like what you are doing for your studies and also you have some activities to do with friends around so uh, it's the same idea if you want to manage like get priority to some things at some times and then other priority other times. So it's basically the same idea. Uh, beside also having some volunteer activities outside, this was uh, part of the challenging things for me actually till now, because uh, back then when I was in Japan and till now I'm having this part of my time for you every week to participate in some activities such as SJC and MV and stuff like that. So at the, the part that you enjoy in doing this volunteer work would give you back the push that, yeah, I have also to work on myself and on the, the research that I'm doing and the projects and stuff like that. And I, so that I can free some time for things that makes me happy or enjoy and give some impact. So it's the same uh, everywhere, I think. You have some commitments and you have also thing, things that you have to free time for to enjoy. Okay. And also, Kate, do you think that your work-life uh, balance is effective? Um, when I was uh, working as a project manager on the satellite, I could say no, because I wasn't sleeping. I was sleeping with my phone every single day. And if at 2 a.m. it was vibrating, I was waking up to send an email back. Uh, so I don't think it's very healthy. Uh, but later on, when I was working in the business development, I realized that it's also not so healthy. Because we are traveling every single week to a different country, it's always a time difference. You always you always have to be fresh. So a healthy lifestyle is definitely very important. Um, 
it's it's difficult to manage your private life and work life because you are always uh, like Shazana said your brain is separated into two parts you have your family and you have your work and it's two important projects in your life uh, that manage both of them complicated it's like you have two businesses let's say you have two private businesses and uh, both of business have to be successful and profitable uh, but as you know uh, as businessman says it's it's difficult to do so i believe managing i don't know anyone who can manage it very very well i i don't meet a person who does this very well <laughs> or maybe, Shazana, maybe you can also share with us do you think that your work-life balance is effective uh currently i think uh i thought previously i thought um uh studying uh in q was very, very hectic. But then when I uh, entered the space industry, even to have a toilet break is like, <laughs> you have to spend a uh, limited time during, during, during the, the break. So uh, what I can say is you need a support from your spouse or your family, your close friend. And sometimes you have to know where to stop and when to stop. <laughs> and uh, in that case, uh, uh, you have to have full support from your spouse, family, and then uh, you have to um, uh, take a good care of your health uh, self, uh, and you have to have good sleep. Uh, like uh, lately, I recently sleep around two to three hours per day <laughs> only. So it's not so healthy, but I have uh, some due date to, 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 uh, to catch up. So at that time, uh, I I thought I, I can do it, but uh, as you reach an older age, so you can feel like your body cannot endure it. So uh, I think you have to know where to stop and when to stop, and you need to have a balance and support from your family and friends also. And also maybe Makiko would also want to hear from you. What is your take on that? Do you think you're, you're balancing your social life and your, and your work at school? It do you think it is effective? So I think uh, effective because uh, in my case, if I want to take a rest, I cannot focus on my work. Uh, so even if uh, so, there's no mean uh, continue continue my work. So if I when I feel uh, tired, I just going back home or uh, going to see the sunset or something by bicycle. And then I become very relaxed. And then after that, um, I can going back to my work. So yeah, um, I don't care about the time. Uh, when I want to focus on my work, I just do that. And then I want to relax. I want to try to relax. But I think this is, um, Mm, only mm, PhD student can possible to do this one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I thank you, Makiko. You talked about one of the most important things that you need to have focus. Not only, of course, the issue of time is also very important because even when you are doing a satellite project, there are deadlines, which means you also need to keep track of the time. But also the important thing that you pointed out is the issue of focus. In whatever you do, the girls out there, you have heard it from Akiko, that you need to keep the focus. Maybe Fatima, I'll come back to you that, um, do you think that the participation of uh, the girl child in your country, do you think that you have got more ladies in the, the science, technology, engineering and mathematics? If not, what do you think needs to be done to improve that? I thank you. It's a very interesting question. I think these days, because also I'm doing some volunteering work also for SGAC, so I could see that there are more girls who are interested also in the space industry and also doing like so many things in other uh, fields of science. So these days, I think like the girls' participation is increasing, like in my country. Before, when I started with my associate's degree, I think it was quite challenging. As Puja mentioned before, I had the, the question like, why do you want to study this? You are a girl. Like, how do you plan to work in that industry? You are a girl. Like, that is not a girl's thing. But now I've seen like a lot of girls like trying to be in this engineering fields, Still, I think like if you go to some to universities, you still might find more 
uh, male students than female students, but compared to what it was before when I started, I think the number is growing. And I can foresee in the future, there will be more female students out there who wants to do this. And maybe to them is like, don't be afraid. Women, we are capable of so many things as uh, Katerina was saying, we have many good skills already inside us. So we just need to use them. They have heard it from Fatima and also Kate that women have got very good skills. So for the girls out there, don't ever have that fear of saying that you can't do space engineering. You have the skills, as they have mentioned. Maybe, uh, Pooja, do you think also in your country, do you have enough girls in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics? Mm, actually, uh, as Fatima mentioned, I think it's increasing in my country also. But back when, when I was studying, uh, in my class of 50 students, only seven students were girls. So I think, uh, actually, my country really tries to include a lot of women in uh, parliament decision making in the jobs. So there is always uh, always, uh, always some things that are done, being done to incre increase the number of women. But I think it also comes from cultural thing that uh, some part of people, that some part of population believe that women are supposed to get married and stay at home and not study a lot. So I think uh, that, that that paradigm is changing now, but back then maybe it was not. So I... Did not I can see a lot of women that are participating, and I also see a lot of women students that uh, come up to me and ask me questions about uh, how what they can do to be involved in space activities and things like that. So I think uh, the number is increasing, and I see you can see that in future it will definitely increase. But back then mm -hmm. it was not so much. Mm -hmm. uh, and order. Yeah, actually, a very interesting thing to mention that here, yeah, like regarding my current job, uh, most of our department is, uh, is is like women are dominating our uh, our field. So I have to say that yeah, the interest is growing and everything's accessible. And this kind of thinking is not so much popular as the previous years. So yeah, the thing is changing, and you get the opportunity if you want to do this, you can you can definitely do it. Yeah, that's good. Uh, do it mentality is, is very important. And Shazana, what is your comment in your country? Yeah, yeah in, in my country, during my study, um, I think uh, in my class, 70% uh, uh, is engineering engineering student uh, women women engineering student so oh, i think uh, last time when uh, there is a delegation from malaysia came to kitech and uh, one of the senses uh, asked me uh, why there is so many students uh, why all women <laughs> came uh, from the engineering uh, uh, faculty and then i i told him that um, in our university uh, engineering particularly is 70 percent women so even in when i uh, enter the space industry in my company uh, all the engineering engineering uh, lead teams uh, i think more than 50 50 percent is women so lead engineering team in the uh, my in the, uh, space company is uh, 50 percent women so i don't think uh, i think in malaysia uh, since maybe 90s there's no gender issue anymore. And I quite shocked that um, people still asking me, uh, can you drive your car? So I was like, uh, I can drive. I have my license since, since uh, 18. So uh, in my country, there's no issue of uh, gender, um, especially women taking uh, engineering or something. So, yeah. No and Kate, what is your take? Can you share with us about your country? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> I've never been told by my parents that there is any difference between boys and girls when I was a school kid. So I've never knew that there might be any issue. And my first job was in the lab only with boys. Um, and I've never thought that, you know, there is any problem. Like, I'm, I'm working here, so basically I'm fine. Uh, then I moved to Japan. It was absolutely the same. And I've never feel being treated differently. However, I met so many people who start speaking on the like, you know, international level about the inequality between men and women. And probably what I could say is that we are like women, uh, the decision making process for us is different, for sure. Uh, we are much softer. 
in making a decision than men. Men usually going very straightforward. You, you guys have decision, you just announce it and you're moving. Women, uh, we are thinking very long time uh, first and then we are making decision, then we think again and we think that probably we have to change the decision. And the second, so many emotions involved in decision-making process. And considering these two points, uh, usually uh, the people around you, they are not considering uh, that you need a little bit longer time to, to decide something, right? Um, so probably this, that needs to be kind of explained uh, that the way people think just different, uh, but definitely I think it's not a big problem. And I didn't face any difficulty of being a woman so far I hope so far I noticed that the age sometimes it's an issue uh, but uh, like uh, being a woman less less um, challenging I think okay uh, same in Ukraine uh, same in Ukraine uh, thank you very much uh, Kate we are virtually running out of time. Uh, what is your last words, Pooja, to the girls out there that are listening to this program? Okay, to all the girls there, uh, be strong, uh, believe in yourself. If you think you can do something, if you feel like you can, um, do, not be, uh, do not be scared. Please, uh, if there is a dream that you want to achieve, go for it. Uh, I think uh, the world is changing. I mean, it is no more only on the a man's world. It is both men and women's world. So women can do equally or even more better than men. So go for it. <laughs> and Makiko. So uh, please uh, try to uh, do. Uh, please try to. Um, I say, <laughs> please try to um, keep uh, thinking your dream and then don't afraid. And then I also same, uh, I always feel uh, worry everything, but finally I could, I, I could do everything uh, completely. So just do, thank you. And what that? Yeah, I would like to say that, yeah, if you believe that you want to do this and you really want to do it for yourself, you can you can go ahead and try your best. You can look out, out for mentorship, for guidance. It's available everywhere, especially now in the space field. You can find many opportunities for uh, women have done great things that I'm, they are now trying to support younger ladies. And uh, these initiatives are very helpful, I believe. So don't also believe that the work environment will be very hard for a girl or stuff. It's challenging for for everyone and the quality of the output that you are delivering is the only measure for your uh, continuation in this process. So keep it up and do your best and best of luck. <laughs> and Fatima, what are your last words to the girls all day? Well, to the, all the girls listening to this, I think you could learn a lot from all uh, what it's been shared here today. Like even myself, I feel like I'm learning a lot from each of you guys. Thank you. And as everyone said, like the first thing is, you know, step out of your comfort zone. If that is what you really want to do, just embrace the challenge because there is going to be some challenges, but I think they're more in a personal level of, for example, like managing your time, self-learning. But if you really want to achieve something, if it's your dream, you have just to keep focusing on your goal. And I'm definitely sure that there's nothing that will stop you from there. Thank you. And uh, Shazana? Yeah, uh, I think uh, women out there should, um, should, should, shouldn't should think about the misconcept of just being women cannot we can, you cannot enter the space industry and then you also uh, we also cannot uh, limit ourselves like uh, women just do the admin work or uh, the uh, secretary work only but if you have passion for it just go for it and uh, think out of the box uh, don't limit yourself so um, I think it's an individual characteristic also. Like if you want to learn something, uh, you, you will strive for it. You will uh, put some effort to learn. And if you make mistake, it's okay. Just cry over it <laughs> and uh, move, move on. And <laughs> Kate. Uh, yeah, sure. Thank you so much. All ladies already mentioned that you need to do what you have passion for. 
And I want to return back a little bit in our conversation when we were talking about the nation needs that the successful projects are coming from something that nations are really looking for or what's useful for the country. From the experience, I could say usually it doesn't work. So usually works your inspiration. Uh, you find your success when you follow your inspiration, not, not the national needs. People just joined you when they see how you are burning, like, you know, you're happy about your ideas. So I want to wish everyone to find this inspiration to move forward to get the success. Uh, thank you very much, uh, all of you, for coming to this program. Like uh, what uh, Fatima said, that she said, uh, get out of the comfort zone and go for it. So for all the girls out there, I say, get out of the comfort zone and go for it. There is more space in space, more careers in space that you can go for. You can do space engineering, focus on the electrical, mechanical, the uh, space biologist. Uh, there are some that are uh, more focusing on the food than the astronauts were. Uh, it, there are some that design the space suits. We can go over and over, we've got space lawyers. So there are more careers into space. So just find your career that uh, follow your passion, like what can follow your passion if you have got a passion in, in, in a certain thing, go for it. So my name is uh, Chimoth Kwamba. I'll see you next year in the edition of the World Space Week. Thank you very much for listening to this program.